hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ninja Saltman, Ninja Preparito, however you prefer. And today I'm here to, t to be talking about chops, cuts, and swords. Now, we know that we have straight swords, which are better for chopping, and we know we have curved swords, which are better for cutting. And then there's the in between. The swords that are almost straight but have a slight curve and they don't see to be very significant the curve lots of people talk about it and they think it's not significant but it's because they try chops and they try cuts but there's one thing they don't try or maybe they do but I think more focus should be put into it but before we reveal it let's do first a cut Okay, hopefully you can see it. Cut. Let's make sure you can see. Uh, no. Okay, uh, the cut is right there. I'm not sure you can see it, but. Okay, now let's try the chop. And the chop is right there. Hopefully you can see it. Now, here's the thing that should be tried, and it's not tried. Let's see if I can do it. I have a little space here. Maybe a little, a little softer. Okay. You can see that big scratch right there. You see, lots of people either cut or chop but they hardly ever chop cut it's when you do like, as if you were chopping but combine the cutting action so have both ways in which the blade gets into the flesh both together that causes a bigger cut that makes swords look sharper that is what those almost straight swords with a slight curve are for and I think it should be more emphasized and more practiced as you can see because here's the cut barely visible here's the chop small and here's the chop cut that makes a clear difference um, so yes yeah, like the downward force of a chop with the drawing cut with the drawing action of a cut well, I think that's all the time I have now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.